Hey, all. Thanks for um, tuning in this morning. It's uh, Tuesday today. Last week I said it was Wednesday on Tuesday, but I got my days right t this week. Um, March 31st. Amazing. We're almost in April. I just want to give you a quick update on the week ahead. Um, just brief, more details later on on this whole stuff. We started up life groups again. Um, this week we started them up. They are online. If you go to calvaryfromhome.com, um, you could sign up for them right there. That's our website, calvaryfromhome.com, for the entire church and how the church can connect with one another, especially during this time of COVID-19. Um, it's developing all the time, so just keep heading back there okay one of the reasons why we want everybody in life groups I mean besides that we believe that the New Testament has this mandate to do life together right and life groups is just a great way to do that but besides that well and also that it's one of the multi-pronged forks and how God grows us in this journey with him but besides those it's a way for the church um, to be connected with you, right? So the church can stay to get to, to connected um, we don't want anyone in isolation. We don't, we don't want anyone in a place where they need provision or, or prayer in this season. Well, we don't ever want the, the people to be in that position um, where they can't get that. But definitely in this season, life groups will help us to localize the care and prayer. We believe in ministering to one another in a time of need. And you might not be in need at, at this time, but there are others that are. And so we we want you and we need you to be part of making a difference for others. Um, so what I want to share with you today, um, so that's that's just the update. What I want to share with you today is Psalm 91. Um, it's a psalm I was reading it this morning. It's an amazing psalm. I'm going through the psalms, my devotional readings in the morning. I've been doing that for, for years. I read one psalm a day, and then I read other portions of Scripture. Uh, but this was mine this morning, um, Psalm 91. It's one of those psalms that... Um, Everybody should know. It's a, it's a longtime favorite in my home. It's a great end of the day psalm to read. It's a great midday psalm to read. It's a great morning psalm to read. You know, one of those all round good psalms to be praying through in the day, right? Um, it's an amazing psalm. It's, um, it's rich in who God is and who he desires to be for us. It's rich in his promises towards his kids. So I, I'll just read it um, and you can check it out um, later and read it too. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler, that small shield. Um, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by the day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen, amen. Um, look, you pray that psalm through. Great. Go back over it. Pray it through. Speak that psalm out. If you're used to like reading God's word in silence, like like a book, I mean, that's that's awesome and all. But also get used to this. Get used to speaking God's word out, well, out loud. 
God's given his word, his truth, his, and you know, and, and, and it's life, it's truth, it's, it's power. It has power to take down as well as to build up and to heal. You know, so speak it out. You know, we speak a lot of untruths in our day, especially if you're a person, you know, who's worrying um, and it's, it's got a lot of anxious, you know, cares going on or control issues. Um, you know, well, actually, we all we all speak to ourselves, you know, um, negatively um, at times. And sometimes it comes out audibly. Right. We all have this self-talk going on. And sometimes it finds its way out. Well, here, in, instead of doing all that stuff, speak the truth of God's word. Let your own ears hear it. Let the air in your home hear it. Let others in your house hear it. You know, God's word's going to remain. His promises are going to be yes and amen in Christ Jesus, right? I mean, his word, as God said, it's going to, his word's going to accomplish the task that he set it out to do. And when we go through the Bible, you know, and we read of the blessings of the Bible, or, or we actually, when we see people, in the Bible, speaking blessings over others. I mean, look at what they did. Do the same thing, right? Jesus laid his hands on his on children and he blessed them. Abraham was given a promise by God. I'll bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you. I mean, we see Isaac blessing Jacob. And even when Jacob steals the blessing from his brother, which is his own story, go read about it. Um, but the fact is, even though he stole it, Isaac knew he blessed Jacob and those words had power. He knew things were altered by that blessing. Jacob blessed Joseph's sons and he switched his hands and, and blessed the younger one over the older. And Joseph was like, hey, God, you know, straighten out your hands, bless the older one first. And Jacob said, I know what I'm doing. And he knew, he knew reality was being altered by those words. And on and on we can go. In in the New Testament, I mean, we see it over and over again. I mean, just Romans, for example. Romans 15 verses 5 and 6 says, may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the blessing, right? Romans 15, 13, um, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Speak God's word. Speak it over each other. God's given you a blessing right here in Psalm 91. Speak it out. Let heaven confirm what's been spoken on earth. Let the heavenlies hear what's been given. Let your deep, right? Let the inmost regions of who you are hear what God has said. Let, let your family know. God cares. Heaven and earth is going to pass away. The word of God is going to remain forever. And yeah, I get it. Some abuse God's word and all that and the whole blessing thing and all that. Yeah, I, I get it. That doesn't mean that you should shrink back from blessing. In Colossians, um, as well as Ephesians, we're told, we're told to speak to one another in Psalms, hymns, and, and spiritual songs. In Colossians 3, um, 15, it says, it says, uh, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body, um, in, in one body and to be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another, okay, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with the grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in the word or deed, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Just good stuff. I mean, you look at the first verses of Psalm of Psalm ninety one. Let me go back to that here for a second. I'll just give you just a quick kind of wet your whistle on it so you could run with it later. The first verse is it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So the, the Most High um is Elion. It's that's the name for God. John Corson said this about this, the, the Most High, um, Elion. He said, it's always linked with priestly praise. In other words, um, he who lives in a secret place of praise and worship, in morning devotions and evening walks with the Lord, shall abide under the shadow of God's protection and provision. And he went on and he said this, praise always precedes power. 
And, goes, and I, I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. And there's things you need to take refuge. You know, you think about that, and he just all these great, I mean, promises there, right? I mean, you think about you think about those verses and the crazy time that we're, we get to live in right now. I mean, what's the safest place? I mean, if you watch the news, I, I mean, you get to see the crazy, right? I mean, people making safe places for themselves, fortresses, big plastic bubbles, you know, m- moving around in big. I this one lady. I, I, somebody sent me a video clip of a lady moving around this big plastic bubble. Um, people going to grocery stores with complete scuba gear on, you know, the whole compressors, the air tanks, and all that kind of stuff. So, like, what's the safe place for you? Home, home's my, I'm going to lock myself away, make my, make it a fortress, you know, prepare for months to be locked up, keep people out. Look, and I get why we do that and social distancing and all that, and, and we should, there's no doubt about that, because it protects the most vulnerable and the elderly. And obviously we want to do that. But what's the safe place for you? The psalmist seems to think that the safest place ever is the presence of God. You know, People, I mean, even, even us, right? I mean, we'll put a lot of effort in making our homes safe, you know, keeping germs out, keeping the virus out, protecting ourselves from the virus and all. And that's, and that's good stuff and all that. You know, I'm not saying be stupid or anything like that. But do you put that much effort in making yourself dwell in his presence? And entering into his presence? I mean, yeah, working from home, washing your hands, staying away from others. Got it, got it, all that stuff. How much energy is, how much energy do you expend in making sure that the Most High is praised, sought after, thanked in your life? How much? You know, he's our refuge. God is calling all of us near to him. And I do believe he is doing something in our age that followers of Jesus in the past would be envious of. Look, I'll just grab the last verses when God speaks um, and read them to you. Because he has set his hope upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's some good stuff. Your father in heaven wants to hear from you. He wants you to draw near to him. Jesus has made the way possible. Go to him. It just requires your time. Your time. You were created for such things as these. Enter into it. God bless you guys. Thanks for listening.